Since coming to office, Taipei Mayor Koenja has been a proponent of bringing a new urban aesthetic to Taiwan's capital. His biggest effort along those lines was the demolition of Zhongxiao Bridge over the Lunar New Year holiday. But the new space created has made the large billboards in the area even more obvious. Is it too late to save anything of Taipei's old charm? Our Sunday in Death Report. The red brick colored Chang'an Gate, also known as the North Gate, was first built in 1884 during the Qing Dynasty. To the left of the North Gate is the Taipei Post Office, a prominent example of Japanese colonial era architecture. And to the right is a contemporary office building. The one location offers architecture from three distinct periods in Taipei's history. One of the more common forms found in Chinese-style architecture from the Qing Dynasty is a building which is very square and balanced in its design. During the period of Japanese rule in Taiwan, the most common type of buildings were those done in a native Japanese style. And the second most popular type were those built in a special style which combined Japanese elements with contemporary architectural influences from Europe and the U.S. That's why a lot of buildings from this period seem to take their main inspiration from Western forms and trends. When the KMT arrived in Taiwan after the end of World War II, there was little long-term planning done to coordinate the development of Taiwanese cities. Even today, Taipei skyline is growing more chaotic as high-rises and skyscrapers continue to be built. The lack of any thoroughgoing plan for development in the nation's urban areas sometimes means that the buildings on one given street, or even the apartments in one building, are designed according to different architectural styles. Agua Joe, a local designer who lived in France for four years, sees big differences in the French and Taiwanese approaches. Paris invests so much more in itself than Taiwanese cities do in themselves. Urban investment in Paris expresses a uniform approach, while investment in Taiwan is made by individuals for themselves, so there's not as much of a collective consciousness. Mm. You can get an idea of the extent to which Paris has invested in its urban aesthetics just by looking at a cleaning truck on one of the city streets. During my first trip to Paris, I couldn't help but notice that the uniforms and tools of the city's cleaning crews together made up a gradient pattern of shades of green. I think that you can discern a country's approach to governance in such details. In the case of Taipei, aside from the various historical factors that contributed to a hodgepodge of urban forms, municipal authorities may bear part of the blame for the city's ugly face. Our public servants are all very talented, and I believe that they also probably have very high IQs. But when it comes to the aspect of beauty, I think they are seriously lacking. It's a problem that isn't taken seriously by anyone in government, including those at the very top, and that's a big problem for all of us. The seeming ignorance of government officials when it comes to the notion of beauty has unfortunately extended to the construction of urban infrastructure. After such a long period of aesthetic neglect, the residents of the nation's cities may be starting to lose their appreciation of that elusive quality. When the financial situation of the average person improves, they're likely to want to take care of themselves first and foremost and not spend their money on things that others might be able to appreciate from the outside. I think that this marks the disappearance of a certain set of public values. Now we don't think it's embarrassing if the exterior of our apartment or building is run down or damaged. But in foreign countries, if you don't take proper care of my yard or windowsill, it's considered a big embarrassment. Without much in the way of planning and supervision, Taipei turned into the city it is today. Its streets and alleys peppered indiscriminately with barred windows, power lines, shop signs and electrical transformers. Some attempts have been made to address these four major eyesores with varying results. Residents of Taipei are all familiar with the landscape paintings on the outside of the city's many transformer boxes. The paintings were once seen as a way of greening the city's streets, but in the eyes of Agua Joe, they represent a big source of dissonance. 
These landscape paintings appear totally out of place on the street, and they create a chaotic setting in which lots of people become used to putting their trash or other various things next to the boxes. They're not valued by the public. Starting this past May, Taipei officials embarked on a project to repaint the city's transformer boxes with neutral colors, including brown, green, and gray. The environment is the set on which the people are the actors. So if we water down the environment's brightness and colors a bit, it will actually bring the whole environment into better accord with its inhabitants. Taipei has already taken some small steps toward urban beautification. But what's next for the city? Experts suggest that less may be more in this case. If Zhongxiao Bridge had never been demolished, perhaps nobody would have noticed what it was covering up in the first place.